So now in this video, we're going to be looking at the Schmidt trigger. We're going to be using an op amp for that. This is going to be one of my op amp videos. And the uh, Schmidt trigger, it depends on hysteresis. So we'll talk about that coming up real soon. Hysteresis depends on positive feedback. And so when you're looking at an uh, op amp schematic and you see something like this, that indicates you have uh, hysteresis there. We're getting some positive feedback to the non-inverting input. So that's the main takeaway right there. That's the basic schematic symbol if you're using 9 volts. You could have a different voltage there. It may not even indicate any voltage there. And then you just use what uh, the power supply is. But in any case, let's quickly look. You can tell you're dealing with a Schmidt trigger when you see this symbol right here. So it will be in other uh, symbols there and main takeaway is we will look at this graph so last video I did we set zero volts at the inverting input so that was the voltage we were looking at when the non-inverting input went any little bit higher than that we got a high output when it got any bit lower than that the output went low now the 741 op amp doesn't go all the way to the rails so you can see I left a little space there from uh, the end of up there and down there but in any case the main takeaway is any small above or below or a massive down below would keep a low signal any little bit or a lot more positive than zero volts at the non-inverting input we would get a high output so you can see here with the Schmidt trigger we don't have that so here's our halfway point and uh, I will zoom in and that's as close as I can get without it going blurry. So it's up here. It crosses the zero point. It keeps going till there. This line there, boom. All of a sudden we go from high to low if we were high to begin with. And then it bounces around this whole area until it gets to that line right there. Boom. The output goes high like that. And again, same thing like that. So it can bounce around or whatever. It can slowly just cross that line. It can stay in one spot. As you can see here, we got below the uh, lower threshold. That's a couple other words we should cover. So the lower threshold there, and then we got the upper threshold there. So this depends on the positive feedback, how wide that threshold area is. But in case you can see here, we were positive. We just strayed to the uh, lower threshold there. Boom. The output goes negative, and it can go up. It can just hover in that area. It doesn't matter. Time doesn't matter, it's just whenever it gets right to that threshold, and then boom, we go high like that. And so, we're going to make a demonstration circuit with uh, this schematic right here using the 741 op amp right there. So, let's see if I can get the pin layout, and uh, we have that. So, what we're going to do, let's uh, do the output first. That is pretty simple. So you can see output is pin 6. Right over there. Third pin down, we got the positive supply, pin 7. The negative supply, pin number 4, right there. So I'm using the 741 op amp, as you can see there. And I have the values written on there. Our positive feedback resistor, though, the uh, depends on how much hysteresis we want. So we'll use a couple values. But in any case, I'm going to use a red LED to know when the output is high. So we're going to be using somewhat alternating current in this video. The output will either be sourcing current to the red LED. So I'm going to put the long lead down one row from this jumper, short lead to the jumper. This is my 2426, TLE 2426, and it takes the rail voltage, we'll be using 18 volts, and splits it to positive 9 and negative 9 volts in relationship to this output pin down there. So this will be the halfway point. We'll consider that 0 volts. And then with 18 volts at the rail, we'll have positive 9, negative 9. And so, long lead nano towards the output there after we attach a resistor. Short lead the cathode up. We're going to do the opposite with the green LED. Cathode, there we go, is going to go towards the negative, to the output I mean. And then the anode, the long lead, is going to go to our output there so that will light up when we have a lower than zero volt at the output there 
by enough to get the diode to conduct. We're going to protect the two LEDs with a resistor and I'm going to put it off to the side here. We'll see why coming up. There we go. So that's our output now. The power is off. I can turn it on now. You can see that uh, it already outputs something and it looks like it prefers to output positive. That's with nothing feeding it. So let's go to the other part. So we did this in the last video. This is our inputs over there so let's see if I can get it all into scene so first we're gonna set our inverted input there you can see it's a voltage divider and you could also go by the negative some people will just say negative at the negative input but non-inverting input is more proper so we're gonna set the voltage if you take a voltage and take two equal resistors tap in between the two equal resistors when they're connected across that voltage you'll get half of the voltage so half of negative 9 and positive 9 is 0 and so we will just zoom in here I'm going to take a hundred kilo ohm resistors you can use high value resistors here because the input just looks at voltage it does not look at current at all so a little current might slip in and just a very small amount though insignificant amount and so you can use high value resistors as long as they let enough current go through that just a speck slipping away won't throw off the voltage that's the main thing now again we're just wiring the comparator and we're going to compare the voltage we set there to our non-inverting input so I got this trim pot here, positive rail, negative rail there. This is a 10 kilo ohm trim pot. I forgot to write that there. So 10,000 ohm trim pot. Again, exact value, not terribly important, but with the positive feedback, it will make a little more difference than a regular comparator circuit. So I'm just gonna go there. That is third pin down. That, as you can see here, is the non-inverting input right there. So this is just for the 741 op amp. Other op amps may have a different pin layout but now we have our basic circuit so let's uh, get this here as you can see the power supply we have 18 volts at the rail and a maximum of 30 milliamps of current just in case I miswire something we uh, won't accidentally fry anything now we have uh, about 8 milliamps well the red LED and so that means the trim pot's a little more positive. I'll go just slightly more negative. You can see it goes green. So anywhere along here. And uh, there's a real fine point here. You can see it kind of flickers. If I'm a bit, a little bit indecisive, you know, just in that range. And so positive feedback, very simple. We have the resistor there, as I showed before. So let's do the 22 kilo ohm resistor first. So that would be uh, red, red, first two colored stripes if you know the color code and uh, see I accidentally short something but actually I probably gave it a false signal with my body so there we go let's uh, zoom in now this is 22 kilo ohms from the output to the non inverting input so when the outputs high it's given a higher voltage at the non inverting input than what we set with the trim pot. So let's go low. Now, we went low enough to overcome that. We got a low output, so now it's holding it a little more low. So right at that point, it's not gonna switch again. We have to go up a bit. So it's not, so I'll go right to that spot. I can't wiggle it right there where it flips on and off. I gotta make a little more effort for some more range of motion and so we can go to a more extreme version with a 3 kilo ohm resistor so I'm just gonna pluck that out there and this is 3 kilo ohm so I'll zoom in so you can see me plug it in we're going to where the non inverting input is and the output right there now let's check on it so we have a high output there just going higher we'll just hold it like that so now you can see we're getting fairly close to the negative rail right there before it went low. 
Now we have to get fairly close to the positive rail before it goes high right there. But there you can see it's real clear. I have to turn this trim pot very far before I get to the upper threshold there and the lower threshold right there. So that's the Schmidt trigger. When you see a Schmidt trigger input, it means it's looking at whether it's a high or low signal, but it's got a little wiggle room. It has that hysteresis, which is where the wiggle room is. The uh, limit there and the limit there, that's our hysteresis right there. That uh, range right there. So, in any case, that's pretty much it for what the Schmidt trigger, hysteresis, and uh, positive feedback do. But, uh, of course, there's more information out there. Keep uh, studying it. Don't just go by this. But uh, that pretty much breaks down what it is. Uh, pretty good. So, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.